Hi guys, we are going to move on in math. And so entering week five, we are going to learn how to solve two-step inequalities. This is still in topic five, um, but what we're gonna use this week when we learn how to solve two-step inequalities, we're actually gonna still use what we learned last week with graphing inequalities. So we still wanna remember that. We're also gonna think back to week three when we were remembering how to solve equations, solving those two-step and multi-step equations. So we're gonna kind of use some of the skills we did and reviewed in week three, and we're gonna use the skills we learned last week to help us when we're solving our two-step inequalities this week. So today we are going to, um, for our objective, focus on um, the fact that students will be able to solve and graph two-step inequalities. That's the goal today, solve and graph two-step inequalities. Let's review first. Um, and reviewing is we already know how to solve a two-step equation. That's something that looks like this. You already know how to do that. The new piece today is now you're going to actually solve a two-step inequality. If you look at the inequality and at the equation, they look really similar. 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. The only difference is the symbol. Okay, This symbol is my greater than sign, whereas this symbol is my equal sign. I'm gonna show you first the difference between the two, and that should help make um, a little bit more sense when we move forward to learning how to just solve and graph them, okay? So um, when we do this, I'm gonna just review solving first. So solving a two-step equation, I'm gonna draw my line, and then I'm gonna circle my variable term, and then I wanna get rid of this plus three first, the positive three, and I can do that by taking away three but whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Now, my threes cancel out, so I can cross them out, and I'm just gonna bring down my two x. Two x is equal to, and then 11 minus three, that is eight. It's positive eight, because 11 is the bigger number, and it's positive. I'm gonna draw my line again, and I'm just gonna divide by two on both sides. Remember, because two and x were right next to each other, that was multiplication, so the opposite is dividing by two on both sides. 2 divided by 2 cancels out, that's just 1x, so that's x equals 8 divided by 2 is 4. So my answer is x equals 4. Remember um, what we learned how to check our work? So if I'm checking my work, I can copy down this problem, 2x plus 3 equals 11. And we said you just plug 4 in for x. So 2 times um, x, instead of saying x, I'm going to substitute my 4 plus three equals 11. I'm gonna solve this to see, okay, does the left side actually equal 11? And if it does, that means we were correct. So on the left side, two times four, that's eight plus three equals 11. Eight plus three is 11, so yes, 11 equals 11. That checks out, which means my answer really was x equals four. So for this equation to be true, x has to be four. Let's look at how that's different when we're looking at an inequality. So I still have this inequality sign right here. That's the only difference. This was an equation here. And my first step when I was doing the equation was I drew a line. I'm still gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna draw my line and I still wanna get x by itself. I wanna get the variable alone. So I'm gonna circle my variable term first. I wanna get rid of the positive three or plus three. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. And I'm gonna take away three from both sides. So now my threes cancel on the left, and then I'm just gonna bring the two x down. I'm now gonna just bring my inequality sign down. Remember, it wasn't an equal sign, it was a greater than sign, so I'm just gonna copy that down. And now on the right side, 11 minus three, that's eight. I'm gonna draw my line, my last step, I have to get rid of that two. This is two times x, so instead I'm going to divide both sides by two cancels on the left, so I get x on the left, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and now my symbol, I'm just copying it down again, so my answer is x is greater than 4. If you compare what I did when I reviewed my solving two-step equation with the new uh, solving a two-step inequality, it is super similar. The only difference is I just brought down the inequality sign. That's the only difference. I just copied that inequality sign down. So Let's see what this actually means. X is greater than four. That actually means the answer to this, X can be any number bigger than four, and that's gonna be greater than 11. So the way I check this is I'm gonna 
still copy down my inequality. 2x plus 3 is greater than 11. And I'm going to plug in a number for x. Well, my solution tells me that x can be any number bigger than 4. So I'm going to try 5. I'm going to plug in 5. 2 times 5 plus 3 is greater than 11. I chose 5 because 5 is a number bigger than 4. I could have chosen 6 or 7 or 8. I could have chosen any number bigger than 4. I could not have chosen 4 because there was no or equal to sign there. So now when I solve 2 times 5, that's 10 plus 3 is greater than 11. And 10 plus 3 is 13. And I'm going to think, is 13 greater than 11? Yeah, the number 13 is greater than 11, so that checks out also. So the difference between solving for an equation versus solving for an inequality is an inequality has multiple solutions. So in this case, x can be any number that's bigger than 4. So if I were to graph this, thinking back to last week, if I wanted to graph my answer, I could place in the middle my answer, which was 4. I can count up. 5, 6, count down, 3, 2, and I'm going to place an open circle at 4 because it was just greater than, and x can be any number greater than 4. So x is going to go, we're going to go to the right with this arrow because really our answer x can be any number bigger than 4. So our answer could be a 5, it could be a 6, it could be any of the numbers to the right of 4. Whereas over here on our equation, x had to be 4. That was it. So if you actually had to graph that solution, x equals 4, that would have actually just been, here's 4, here's 5, here's 3. I would have just put a point at 4 in this case. That's how the graph looks different. That's just a point because x is equal to 4. And remember, equal to, that's when it's a closed circle. It's a point. So we are going to do a few more examples. We are focusing on the right side here. We're focusing on solving and we're focusing on graphing. You can always do the check step if you need to and you want to make sure that number is actually bigger than the other number and you're following that inequality sign. As a review for your graph, remember your open circle, that is when it's a less than or greater than sign. And then when it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that is when you have a closed circle for those. So closed circle when you have or equal to, open circle when it's just less than or greater than. So let's do some examples, and I'm just going to do three. So we're going to practice solving and then graphing. So I'm going to start with what I did before. I'm just going to draw my line and circle the variable term. And I want to get rid of now a minus 5 or a negative 5. And I can do that by doing the opposite. So the opposite of subtracting 5 would be adding 5. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. The 5s cancel because negative 5 plus 5 is 0, so that cancels out. And I'm just going to bring down 5x. I'm just copying down the less than or equal to sign. Nothing changes. It just copies down. 10 plus 5, they're both positive, so that's positive 15. Draw my line. My last step here, I can get rid of that 5 by dividing by 5 on both sides. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I'm just left with x. 15 divided by 5, that's 3. And again, that symbol, I'm just going to bring that down. Nothing changes there. I just bring that down. So my answer is x is less than or equal to 3. When I graph, I'm going to place 3 in the center. And then I can put my numbers to the right of it, 4 and 5, 2 and 1. I know my spacing's a little off there. That's okay. So at 3, I'm going to put a circle. And because it's less than or equal to, it's going to be a closed circle at 3 because I have or equal to. x can be less than or equal to 3. So less than, that's going to be to the left. All these numbers getting smaller and more negative. You could also think the arrow is pointing to the left. So that's why I draw the line to the left. OK, we'll do another example. So I'm going to solve for 4x minus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 18. Ooh, I have a negative here. That's OK. I'm going to still go the same way up, go about this the same way. So I'm going to draw my line, circle my 4x. I want to get rid of this minus 2 or this negative 2. So I'm going to have a positive 2 on both sides, or I'm adding 2. This cancels since they're opposites. And I'm just going to bring down 4x. I'm also just going to bring down that greater than or equal to sign, just copying it down. On the right side, I have to think of my integer rules, and I'm going to think of my adding rules. So that's the song. Same signs, add and keep, different signs, subtract. These are different signs. I'm subtracting 18 minus 2 
is 16. Take the sign of the bigger number. That's the negative 18, because 18 is bigger than two and it's negative, so it's negative 16. Draw my line. I need to get rid of that four, so I'm gonna divide by four on both sides. Cancels on the left and I get X. I'm just gonna copy down that inequality and a negative 16 divided by four. They're different signs, so I know it's gonna be a negative answer using my division rules, and 16 divided by four is four. So my solution is x can be any number that's greater than or equal to negative four. When I graph, here's my negative four, and then I'm gonna think, remember, to the right is gonna be zero and positive numbers, so negative three, negative two, that's how I get closer to zero, and on the left, I'm getting more negative, negative five, negative six. When I graph x is greater than or equal to negative four, it's an or equal to sign, which means it's a closed circle at negative four. X can be greater than that though, or equal to, so it could be or equal to, but greater than, that's gonna be more positive. To the right is how we get greater. I'm gonna do one final example here. 9y plus three is less than negative 96. I have a negative, that is okay. I'm gonna draw my line, circle the variable term. I wanna get rid of that plus three, so I can do a minus three on both sides, or a negative three, because the opposite of a positive three is a negative three. Cancels on the left, and I get nine y. Copy down that sign, so it's a less than. Now here on the right, you could think of this as, well, let's just use our adding rules, and I'm gonna think of this as a negative 96 and a negative three. They're the same sign, they're both negative, so I'm gonna add them together and keep the sign, negative 96. If you're wondering how I got, oop, just kidding, not negative 96. Negative 99. Let me just write it like that, there we go, negative 99. If you're wondering how I got negative 99, I could also go off the right side and I could think, okay, if I just wrote it from left to right, negative 96 minus three, I'm going to actually keep this first number. This changes to a plus and I'm adding the opposite or keep change change. Now they're same signs, add and keep, and I get negative 99 that way. You could always write it off to the right side if you need to. But there we go, there's my negative 99. So I can get rid of this last step, my nine here, by dividing both sides by nine. Cancels on the left, so I get y. I'm just gonna copy down that less than sign. Negative 99 divided by nine is 11. Different signs is gonna be negative 11. So I'm gonna put a negative 11, which means this gets more negative, negative 12, negative 13, more negative to the left, and more positive to the right, negative 10, negative nine. It's an open circle since it's just a less than sign. And y is less than negative 11. Less than means more negative. So I go to the left. So these were our examples. And if you look, and you might notice that for all of these examples, when I circled the coefficient, the positive, my variable term, the coefficient in front of the x, the var variable, they were all positive. Right, positive 5x, positive 4x, positive 9y. I dealt with negatives on the right side, that's okay. But that was for a reason. So keep an eye on that. You might be wondering, oh, is, what about if there's a negative here though? We're gonna see the negatives next week on the coefficient. Don't worry about that because that's, that's the next part. That's gonna be next week where we learn a new rule with that. This week you're focusing on just solving a two-step inequality and graphing it. The graphing we did last week, you knew this part from last week. So the new part is just putting it together, solving and graphing now. Good luck.